16th Street Baptist Church was the premier black Baptist church in, uh, in Birmingham. It uh, was the historic center of the black community as far as uh, religious institutions were concerned. Um, dating back to the turn of the century when the Reverend William Pettiford uh, headed the congregation, he had been uh, the leading African American in Birmingham, head of the local black bank uh, and a businessman, but also the minister there at 16th Street. Uh, oversaw the uh, construction of the church by Wallace Rayfield, a noted African-American architect. And uh, as a result, 16th Street became uh, one of the largest venues uh, within Birmingham that African-Americans could regularly use. Um, all of the leading African-American uh, figures in America would come and speak at 16th Street. People like Booker T. Washington, uh, W.B. Du Bois, Mary McLeod Bethune. Uh, so it was a, a center for the black community. But it also was um, a middle-class church, and as a result of being a middle-class church, uh, it uh, had a different approach to religion than, say, uh, some of the civil rights movement churches. Uh, the movement in Birmingham really began in 1956, uh, when, under the leadership of the Reverend Fred L. Shuttlesworth uh, from Bethel Baptist Church, uh, a group of uh, committed Christians uh, organized around the idea that God was going to help them defeat segregation. Uh, and their uh, religiosity tended to be expressed in more uh, charismatic uh, ways. Uh, they um, had services in which uh, the ministers uh, would uh, get carried away with their uh, emotion. Uh, the congregation itself uh, might fall out uh, with their uh, transcendence over these gospel beliefs. And uh, the whole exercise was one of uh, a very charged uh, experience. That was a process far removed from what one might find in 16th Street Baptist being a, a middle class church. Uh, it had uh, ministers uh, who were more reserved in their approach. Uh, the congregation sang uh, the great hymns of Dr. Watts uh, being accompanied on organs, uh, nothing like the gospel sound that was driving the, the civil rights movement. The uh, service that morning on September 15th was designed to emphasize that. Uh, the young people were going to be conducting the service uh, with the um, stated objective of showing that uh, young people indeed can be the leaders in the church. Uh, this was another way of providing a role for the youth other than as uh, demonstrators and protesters in the street. In the course of Birmingham's uh, overall story, uh, some 50 bombings had took place in the city uh, from the Second World War uh, until about 1965 all of them unsolved because the police department uh, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation were incapable of solving them. Uh, and these bombings weren't just of um, individual houses, uh, as so many of them were. Uh, several were of churches uh, and synagogues, uh, a number of targets uh, that were seen as being linked uh, to the civil rights movement. Um, for example, the leader of the struggle in Birmingham, the Reverend Fred L. Shuttlesworth, uh, when he announced uh, a planned protest in December of 1956, actually just really the intention of riding Birmingham's buses in a desegregated fashion as a result of the U.S. Supreme Court ruling over the Montgomery bus boycott. Uh, Reverend Shuttlesworth and his Alabama Christian Movement members uh, planned to ride the buses in the city in a desegregated fashion. Uh, but before they could do that, on December 26th, uh, vigilantes uh, threw six sticks of dynamite at the parsonage in which Reverend Shuttlesworth was uh, resting on a bed following his uh, Christmas services. Uh, and the blast uh, blew up the Reverend's house, uh, as well as uh, did severe damage to the adjacent church, uh, blowing the windows out of the church and damaging it. Uh, but in the house itself, it blew the piers out from under the front porch. The porch collapsed. The roof caved in. Uh, everyone assumed Reverend Shuttlesworth was dead, uh, but he emerged from the rubble. Uh, and this led uh, members of the movement who gathered around the bomb site uh, shortly after it took place that Christmas night in 1956 uh, to declare that God saved the Reverend for the movement, uh, this scene of a symbol of divine intervention. 
Uh, and Shuttlesworth Church was embalmed a second time six years later in 1962, a third time in 1963. Uh, what was so astounding and shocking about 16th Street is that out of those previous 50 bombings, uh, there had been no deaths. But in 16th Street, four girls were killed. Uh, and it was just almost beyond comprehension uh, that the victims could be such innocent lives. Uh, but that was the case. We focus on the bombing in Birmingham, I think, because we've forgotten uh, so many of the other deaths that took place during the civil rights struggle. Uh, and so uh, we tend to look at these, uh, the tragic loss of these four girls without remembering that on that very day, uh, in the aftermath of the bombing in Birmingham, uh, in the hostile racial environment uh, as blacks and whites uh, clashed on the streets of the city uh, near riots breaking out, uh, white vigilante violence taking place, that two other African Americans were brutally murdered. Uh, young black men, boys really, uh, shot dead in the streets of Birmingham. Uh, six people died that day. And so uh, we often forget that uh, there were lots of victims uh, in the civil rights struggle. The bombing of the church in Birmingham in, in 1963, indeed all of the bombings that took place in the city, uh, the murders, these uh, heinous acts of uh, vigilantes, uh, of policemen uh, with their legal lynchings, uh, these uh, tragedies need to be recalled today as reminders of uh, what the South was like and what the power of the ideology of white supremacy uh, could be uh, so that uh, the society and the world uh, doesn't revert to that again. Uh, the, the whole uh, nature of the uh, violence uh, in that, in that uh, era uh, stemmed from a defense of uh, white supremacy and segregation. Uh, and that ideology itself derived from uh, state and local governments, uh, from uh, a political economy that profited by it, uh, by racial division in the marketplace, uh, from um, a public that had been uh, fed and taught and, and raised on ideas of uh, white supremacy. And of course, we understand today uh, there's one race, the human race, uh, and we understand uh, that ideologies are taught uh, and that uh, people uh, are inherently good, uh, but they can be convinced to do bad things in defense of ideologies. Uh, and so I would say that the church bombing is a reminder of how uh, ideologies uh, can work to destroy lives uh, and that what m we must remember uh, is that uh, uh, our uh, ideologies, our cultures, our beliefs uh, should be designed to improve and enhance lives. Following the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church, movement leaders uh, responded by uh, arriving in Birmingham uh, trying to uh, stem the outrage uh, within the African American community. Uh, Reverend Shuttlesworth, uh, the leader of the local movement, uh, was preaching up in Cincinnati when news of the blast reached him, and he just broke down. Uh, he, he couldn't believe uh, the tragedy had taken place and uh, quickly returned to Birmingham. Uh, Dr. King was in Atlanta at Ebenezer Baptist Church. Uh, when he heard of the uh, explosion, he returned to Birmingham. These leaders who had been in the streets of the city in the spring uh, outside uh, 16th Street Baptist leading uh, protests at Kelly Ingram Park uh, immediately returned uh, to Birmingham to try to uh, calm the black community, to continue the progress that was being made and to prevent uh, the generation of race relations in the city any further as a result of this uh, violence. But within the congregation of 16th Street Baptist itself, once the demonstrations ended in May of 1963, Reverend Cross and his board of deacons met uh, and determined that they did not want to participate in any more civil rights demonstrations. And the board voted never to hold a mass meeting or a protest meeting uh, of the civil rights movement again. Uh, and when the dynamiting took place, that great 
irony in a sense because 16th had, had unwillingly come into the movement and was uh, quick to kind of exit the movement and yet in so many ways it becomes the symbol of the movement in Birmingham. Uh, so much so that following the dynamite blast, many of its members leave. Uh, they choose not to return uh, as members of that congregation uh, and the numbers drop uh, for fear of the church might get targeted again.